As an administrator, you can set up the calendar, and this will affect how the calendar appears throughout your site. First of all, you have an option whether admins can see calendar events. This probably isn't necessary. You can, however, also choose the time display format and which day is the start of the week. Also, weekend days. And different countries and different regions do have different weekends. You can also control things like the export of calendar information. The blogging tool in Moodle 2 is more sophisticated than in previous versions. You can enable blog associations to specific courses or modules. You can also control the blog visibility, and this is fairly important uh, if you don't want your blog entries of your users being visible in the whole world, then you need to obviously control that. You can also enable external blogs which can feed into Moodle. And then towards the bottom, we also have settings for the maximum number of external blogs, uh, a, little, a little like RSS feeds, these can take a while to uh, update. And we also have features such as comments and comment counts. Notice that it does increase the query on the database if you enable the comments count. So if you have a slow site, this is definitely something that you should switch off. There are a number of options on the navigation page. First of all, you can choose the default page for users. So when they log in, do they see the standard site front page? Or in fact, are they redirected to their My Home page, which in the previous versions was called My Moodle, which is why that shows here. Or do you want to leave that as a user preference? You can also choose whether course categories are shown in navigation. That can take up quite a lot of space, so that might be a reason for, for unselecting this. You can also choose whether all courses are shown and whether there's a course limit applied. It is possible to use HTML tags within activity and resource names. This can get a little confusing, so there is an option here to remove all these HTML tags. You can also access the emoticons used, or the smileys as they're sometimes known, and in fact towards the bottom of this screen you can even add new ones. The Moodle Docs page initially points to docs.moodle.org, which is the main community documentation site. It is possible to take a copy of those documents and to have those linked locally. You may adapt and change a lot of those help files. This might also be uh, beneficial if you have a very slow external connection, for example. The second option is to open documentation in a new window. We always put that on our sites, it seems to make sense. It's possible to define the default My Moodle page. In the centre, usually, we display the course overview information, which will show assignment dates, uh, new forum posts and so on. It's also possible to add new blocks to this page, and they will therefore appear for everyone on their My Moodle page. Just as with the default My Moodle page, it's possible for administrators to set the default profile page. Again, you can select a number of blocks that you feel will be useful to all users to have displayed on their profile page. The Course Contacts option allows you to control who will appear in the course description. Enabling Ajax and underlying JavaScript can make a big difference to the speed of operation uh, and display of your Moodle pages. It's also useful to note that the JavaScript should be cached and because this greatly improves your performance. If you've got a slow server, you absolutely need this switched on. It's also possible to enable Ajax course editing. So for teachers, this can make editing the course a lot quicker. It's likely that users will create tags primarily on their blog entries. This Manage tag screen allows administrators to see the tag names who created them and how many times they've been used. It's also possible for administrators to rename tags, change the tag type and delete them. The additional HTML page allows administrators to add extra HTML commands within the header or within the body. This is particularly useful because it's completely independent of whichever theme is being used.